and we're gonna do another reaction with Derek. Mm -hmm. This is for the third video in this uh, Mass Effect gameplay mm -hmm. series. This one is Pretty focused on the exploration. Oh, okay. Uh, cool. Because this game is focusing a lot more on exploration. I can't <laughs> talk. It's focusing a lot more on exploration, kind of like you know Mass Effect One had little bits of it. It's like you take that exploration and extrapolate it. Ex explode the yeah. exploration. <laughs> well, because cool. you know in the trilogy, uh, you're Shepard and you're like a military guy, mm -hmm. so it's all about kind of mil. It's very militaristic. Whereas in this one, uh, all these people are like explorers and scientists and oh, stuff. Okay. They're not really military people. So this game is more focused on exploration, which is going to be pretty neat. That's cool. Yeah. So again, I've seen this, but Derek has not. <laughs> so we're getting his nope. reaction, and then we'll discuss it a little bit afterwards. So. Without further ado, let's get this started. Three, awesome. two, one. Welcome back to the Mass Effect Andromeda gameplay series. In our first installments, we took a closer look at combat gameplay. Today, we're diving straight into the heart of Mass Effect Andromeda, exploration. In addition to beautiful story missions, Andromeda is filled with worlds to explore. It's gonna be awesome. No way to solve it. Nope. Our story is contained within the Helios Cluster, a portion of space populated with dozens of star systems. And the Tempest is where that exploration begins. The Tempest. You can navigate star systems using the Tempest Galaxy Map. That's very massive. From planets to <laughs> moons to anomalies and starships, wherever you are in Helios, you'll now be able to see everything that exists outside the ship's main windows in real time. That's awesome. That's really cool. In Andromeda, there are over a hundred planets to discover. Gosh. And a handful of beautifully crafted worlds can be landed on. And that's where the adventure really begins. Like, every world is, like, different. Whereas Mass Effect 1 is, like, its own story, <laughs> the same. Its own character. You land in that. Uh, it's just the same as the last one. Different color skin. Uh-huh. Today, the world we're going to visit is called Elodin. Exploring the opening landing area called Paradise, you'll quickly discover that the heat on this planet can be deadly. Water is scarce. And mysterious ancient artifacts dot the landscape guarded by dangerous remnant creatures. Basically, to live here, you have to be desperate. Or Krogan. <laughs> but even the Krogan aren't happy, and they don't trust anyone from the Initiative, least of all a Pathfinder. How you deal with the Krogan and these challenges will ultimately determine your success on Elodin. We need the Krogan, and the Krogan need us. Before you set out, you'll get an update from your AI, pointing out key locations. The remnants from this suggest this was indeed supposed to be a golden world. We're going to start the adventure by heading over to the Krogan colony, but the choice of where to go is ultimately yours. It's like the new and improved Mako. Oh, nice. Our all-terrain rover, the Nomad, is key to quickly covering the expansive landscapes throughout Fancy Andromeda. Got the heat hazard. You can also enhance there. the Nomad with a series of functional upgrades designed to give you better turbo boost, That's higher awesome. jumps, Couldn't really better handling, and more. The, uh, Mako. While you're exploring, no. one of the Mako key objectives will be to discover locations <laughs> and you can this thing go. Once found, each of these will act as a fast travel point and allow you to change your loadout or call the Nomad if it gets lost or destroyed. They also offer resupply and protection from any environmental hazards. That sounds pretty cool too. Our conversations with the Krogan colony point us in a few directions. Exiles are causing trouble at their base, the Flophouse. Flop and a derelict remnant ship may have a drive core the Krogan are in desperate need of. Let's head to that ship and see what we can find. Out here, we are more exposed to the heat. In Andromeda, all of the planets have localized and or global hazards. The Pathfinder and the Nomad are both separately outfitted with life support systems That's good. that help protect against these hazards. Yeah. So but once like you run out, you'll need to find a safe location or a forward station to recharge. The, uh, the vehicle's on fire. <laughs> As you travel throughout the world, you'll find Whoa. new areas to explore, see that new characters, and new storylines. Ultimately, all of these discoveries will help raise the viability of the planet. Increasing planet viability does two things. Allow for the creation of an outpost and upgrade the Nexus, the Andromeda Initiative That's space like the station. Citadel of this game. Before yeah. a planet can support an outpost, you'll first need to get its viability and to at least 40% by pacifying landscape. threats, allying Dinosaurs. yourself with locals, <laughs> solving like. environmental problems, and accomplishing specific tasks related to that planet's story. For example, in the case of Elodin, your relationship with the Krogan will determine whether you can build here or not. Regardless of whether you build an outpost, your exploration and discoveries will also give you Andromeda viability points. Reaching thresholds will allow you to upgrade the Nexus and wake up more colonists from cryosleep. Who you decide to wake up will determine what perks and advantages you'll get. Will you wake up scientists to give you an edge in research and development? Military personnel to give you an edge in combat? Or merchants that to thing, give you a leg up That's pretty neat too. 
being able to like so but of course not everything oh, on these worlds cool. will be so straightforward Andromeda holds many mysteries not the least of which is a vast network of ancient vaults simply thing. figuring out how to it's access one of these vaults is a challenge in and of itself that can take you across an entire world once inside you'll need to rely on skills from every element of Andromeda gameplay including well, exploration that, that's not gonna environmental well. navigation <laughs> puzzle solving and combat to get them back online and then make it out alive <laughs> and resolving the mystery of these vaults may just hold the key to survival in Andromeda this is unbelievable at its heart Mass Effect Andromeda is a game of discovery and exploration the choices you make in awesome. the places you go that you blaze awesome. your own unique trail through Andromeda <laughs> Whether you're exploring the depths of a crashed starship or delving into the core of an active volcano, the more you engage with the world around you and the characters in it, the more that world will surprise you with what's waiting just around the corner. It's really going to be something, isn't it? I really like how each world is actually a different thing. <clears throat> Well, has its own unique oh yeah like environments well, and hazards and you know like watching that <clears throat> you wouldn't even like it's not even the same sort of game as what the other you know, videos where it's like a completely different right like because you wouldn't even guess you were playing the same game because it's all yeah all the exploration you, you explore and then you have the you know that's a completely different side of it mm -hmm. like, that's pretty neat I like that side of it too yeah it kind of takes you away from the craziness of the battlefield I guess and, yeah I think it's going to be... Calm it down a little bit. I think it's going to be really fun. Oh, yeah. Uh, again, we've only got a couple of weeks to go, mm -hmm. and we'll get to try it out for ourselves, but, uh, yeah, I think just the exploration, and, you know, you've got this little scanner tool that you can, like, scan stuff mm -hmm. in front of you. It's awesome. Um, you can do the planet probing again, kind of like you did in Mass Effect 2. Oh, you get, like, you remember materials how, from it? Yeah. You remember how cumbersome that was in Mass oh, Effect yeah. 2, though? <laughs> I remember having really to spend, bad. like, a couple hours just dropping probes on planets to get all these elements. Mm -hmm. That um, was bad. I think there's a portion of that. You can also get elements from being down on the planet uh, oh, okay. and all that stuff. But yeah, that Nexus thing is what is essentially like the uh, Citadel for this game. Because the way that it worked with Andromeda when they started this initiative, uh, this Andromeda initiative, I can't remember how many thousands of people are part of it, but it's, I think there's, I can't remember how many races are in it. There's the humans, uh, the Krogans, the Turians, the Asari... And Solarians, I think. Mm. Well, I know Solarians are there. I don't remember if they're one of the core ones or mm. what, but uh, there might be others. I think that's all that's been officially confirmed so okay. far. But there's all these races that kind of put together this initiative and put a bunch of their species on this thing to go from the Milky Way galaxy to Andromeda. And okay. they left during the events of Mass Effect 2, I believe. Okay. So they left before the Reapers came mm -hmm. to actually made it to the galaxy. Oh, okay. And... So all these people have been asleep for 600 years. So at the time, wow. the, at the time this game takes place, it's 600 years after the events of the Mass Effect trilogy. Really? So wow. it's far enough away that nothing from that trilogy is really going to have any effect here. Yeah. But mm -hmm. these people were alive at the time, so like they're going to talk about Shepard. Mm -hmm. Like they're going to talk about the events that happened up until whatever Mass Effect Two or whatever. Because um, I heard that at the beginning of the game, I guess it. It does ask you one thing from the trilogy, and I guess it asks you if Commander Shepard was a male or female. Oh, yeah. So that way, however you played as Shepard, uh -huh. anytime they reference him or her in the game, they'll say, like, he, she, oh, okay. whatever, which is kind of neat. That is, that is neat. So it makes it a little more a continuity. A little bit of a tie-in, yeah. Mm -hmm. But I'm excited for it, Derek. Yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> I think they're doing, uh, they're doing one of these videos a week, so I guess okay. with there being two weeks left, I think there's going to be five videos totaled up oh, awesome. for this week. Number five next week, and then the week after that, the game comes out. So Awesome. I'll have to check those out, too. Yeah. All right, guys. So let us know what you thought down in the comments below. Uh, if you're excited for the game, and hit that like button on the video. Subscribe if you haven't already. Uh, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. Thanks, guys. Nice.